Okay, well, here's my AMV211 uh, that I made for X-Plane version 9. I modeled it in Blender first, not even thinking about making an X-Plane version of it. But then, uh, then X-Plane version 9 came out, and I took a look at it. I downloaded the demo, and I found that there was extensive support for Blender, Import, and exp Export. So what I did next was uh, um, took the... Um, Cessna that came with X-Plane version 9 and I started rebuilding it to uh, make this model out of it meaning I put the engine further back I put two two props with five blades each on it and uh, the flight model is not realistic it's uh, it's accomplished via jet puffers on the wingtips and uh, front and back um, because the louvers that the um, that the actual plane employs um, are not really good to make in X-Plane version 9. Uh, it, it causes all sorts of turbulences and you don't have as good control over it as I would like. So for the time being, you know, um, it flies really nice with these, uh, with these puffers and artificial stability. So yeah, I imported it into X-Plane, X-Plane's Plane Maker and started adjusting all the parameters to make it this beautiful, uh, vertical takeoff and landing plane. I'm flying around the Innsbruck um, airport that came with the X-Plane version 9. This is the demo area. Uh, you could do this without the actual CD. You could just download X-Plane uh, demo from xplane.com and you would see exactly this. The only limitation of the demo is that you can only fly for 10 minutes. You cannot fly um, for the full uh, length of time that you desire. And the other limitation is that there isn't global scenery. And I did buy the discs and installed about 60 gigs worth of scenery, and they are very nice. Uh, they're not all as nice as Innsbruck is, because uh, my impression is that somebody put a lot of work into this, and I don't think that there would be that same amount of work put into all the scenery of the entire world. Um, you can see this plane is very versatile. You can... Uh, turn on a dime, you can fly forward at a pretty reasonable speed and uh, the inner cockpit controls are all um, animated. Uh, I took the basically I, I took the Cessna that came with X-Plane version 9 and I tried to understand in Blender, I Im imported it into Blender and I tried to understand how the uh, animated parts of it work and uh, just moved them around and transferred them over to suit this plane. Um, if you do a deep analysis, uh, yeah, there's my face. Uh, I modeled that. Actually, that's how I began doing this plane. I modeled my face and I thought, hey, it'd be kind of nice to put myself into a nice cozy cockpit. And when I started doing that, I realized, hey, I should actually make a plane like this. Uh, you notice that red screen, uh, that red little light in the middle of the screen. Well, that's because I recorded this video with a camcorder directly to my laptop screen. Uh, this is X-Plane running on Linux. I have a um, an HP Pavilion DB6000 laptop here with 128 megabytes of video memory running Linux and uh, that allows for some nice uh, pretty good effects. I mean you can't crank it all the way but uh, at least it's running nice and smooth and I did I don't have anti-aliasing on because that just that just kills the the video memory but it's fairly smooth so I didn't want to compromise the uh, frame rate so I decided to put a camcorder in front of it and start recording and that also serves as a you'll notice the cuts aren't all um, linear like I didn't play this back once I've I had flown and then capture the playback this is me all flying real time, changing camera angles and all that stuff. So some of the scenes I tried to recreate sort of the the position that I was in and, and those sorts of things. It's fairly okay to fly. Landing is a bit of a challenge. Uh, it is very bouncy, at least in my versions of X-Plane. It, it keeps wanting to bounce on the runway and I it looks to me like it's kind of a glitch in the um, in the parameters that, uh, that X-Plane has set for rubber like the bouncing back seems to me to be a little bit uh, exaggerated and it doesn't matter how heavy I make the plane or how light I think it has something to do with how far the wheels are away from the center of gravity of the plane but there we go there's a nice little hover 
and touch down. Uh, it bounced a little bit, but not too bad. I can open the the screen from from with the uh, air, uh, air brakes command with the speed brakes command, and here's a nice little shot of uh, taking off vertically around those other planes. Um, yeah, Flughafen Innsbruck. That's what you can read there. It's in Austria, yeah, pretty much in the center of Austria. Uh, very nice scenery, very well well done, modeled and made. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the original AMV 211 is not supposed to have a dual um, counter rotating props. It's just supposed to be one prop, but because of all the torque issues, I just put two props in it, and I modeled it pretty much just by looking. At, I just had a side view um, image of this plane, and then. When you go uh, do a search in Google for AMV 211, you see the uh, the plane standing on a on a on a grass field in Oshkosh, which gave me the rest of the cues, and I took an actual uh, picture of that and mapped it across the 3D software. So so there you go. For more information, you can email me at danclaue at shaw.ca, D-A-N-K-L-A-U-E at shaw.ca. And thanks for watching.